a lot of things in our lives these days are controlled by algorithms, just automated decision making procedures and processes that, you know, of varying degrees of complexity and sophistication. It's gotten to the point where a lot of things in our lives So the question arises when, you know, an algorithm or some other engineered system, uh, you know, complex of algorithms, software, hardware, all that, when that causes harm, what should we do? It's easy to know who to blame in terms of, you know, the company that owns it. But even there, the, res the questions of responsibility get murky in other ways. So one possibility, and this is the possibility that we're talking about with the Florida paper and in unit six here, is that algorithms are, in fact, the responsible moral agents when something goes wrong. So when the banking algorithm discriminates against uh, African American applicants because it's been trained on bad past data, well, when we ask, well, who's the agent there who caused or what caused the harm to the loan applicants that were discriminated against, one possible answer seems to be the system, the algorithm. And that seems really strange because we are very used to assessing when people are blameworthy, blaming people, um, lots and lots of things along those lines um, when we're talking about people. But to allow a machine into that mix, that seems a bit odd. But that's the topic that Flirty is taking up. So here's what we need to do for this uh, for this essay. Um, you've got let's see one, two, three, four, five main tasks. Uh, the first one, as always, in the intro should be super duper short, right? Don't get it's easy to get overboard, and you know I'm actually probably doing that a little bit in this actual presentation to show you what not to do, but. Don't get overboard, but you probably do want to say something a little bit just about what we normally mean by being a moral agent or being morally responsible. And here you just want to contrast, for example, uh, cases in which a person is blameworthy because they actually did something, uh, cases in which a person might have done something but not be blameworthy. So example, for example, the moral luck case, right? Uh, you're driving down the street, not doing anything. Uh, wrong, you're dry, being as safe as you can, but somebody runs out from between two parked cars, you, no way you could have seen them, you hit them and kill them. It seems like you're the moral agent, you're the cause of the thing that happened, but then we don't think you are responsible, at least in the sense of blameworthy. So you just give an example like that, or you know, contrast like, you know, if a person bites you, you can be mad at them in a way that you can't be mad at a, at a dog if it bites you, right? There's different kinds of things that we'd say. And you might want to say something like I said at the very beginning, why we need to think about this in terms of technology. Okay, so the banking algorithms are just, you know, um, the example, I guess, that's better because it's the one I asked you to talk about is the gatekeeper algorithms used by social media sites. But whatever, just want something really short, just to make sure the reader kind of is situated and knows what's going on. All right. So what you're going to do here in the rest of the paper, in the main part of the paper, is the standard kind of approach, right? So Flirty has given us a certain picture. Um, what I want you to do is first set out that picture and then think through this particular case, because uh, he's not talking about it in the paper. In fact, that paper was written several years ago, and so I don't think Instagram was even around then. But um, then I want, so I want you to set out the picture. I want you to apply it to the particular case of gatekeeper algorithms. I want you to then talk about what that actually means, right? This is, so this is the part where you're just kind of interpreting and applying, you know, but that, now the rest of it's the part where you have to use your brain. So once you do that, you know, then we talk about what that actually means and we talk about some problems with that. So let's talk a little bit about each of these just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay, so for Floridy, the way that he approaches this is to go is to start off with an account of what it is to be an agent, right? So an account of agency, what kind of things count as agents? And he gives three criteria for that, right? Um, the things have to be interactive, uh, adaptable, um, and independent, right? He calls 
this one autonomous, but I'm calling it independence just because we've used autonomy in a specific way. All right. So what you're going to want to say is <laughs> that's terrible spelling and penmanship. Sorry. Uh, you're going to want to say what it being interactive means, right? Given, you know, and give an example, right? So you say what it means just for all of these and give an example. Um, you can use the example for it used. Um, you can use a lecture, a note from the, an example from the lecture notes, or you can just make up your own. Making up your own, again, as always, is usually the best because it shows the re it shows me that you know enough about what's going on to actually come up with an example. But of course, that has the corresponding danger that if you're a little tenuous, your example could show that you really don't know what's going on. So never a problem to use somebody's pre-made example if you want. All right. Um, so you say what it is to be interactive, example, adaptable, blah, 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 and independent, right? So then now we've said, okay, here's what it is to be an agent. Well, okay, but what, you know, so we've got kind of our, a Venn diagram, right? So you've got the, all of the agents, right? So these are all the things that you go around in the world. <laughs> That's supposed to say agents. All the things that you go around in the world and you check, you go, hey, is this thing interactive, adaptive, and independent? Yes, then okay, it goes in that box. No, it doesn't go in the box, okay? or circle as the case may be. So then, you know, he's gonna say, well, but not, I should have picked a more contrasting color. I'm doing good today. Um, these are the moral agents, right? So it's a subset of agents, the ones that are actually moral agents. Okay, <clears throat> so he says, well, what makes a agent a moral agent? Well, it's a moral, it's an agent that can do kind of morally relevant things, right? So in our case, since we're talking about um, harms that are being caused by uh, gatekeeper algorithms, the thing that's kind of relevant is a moral agent then is going to be agents which are capable of, of causing harms, right? It doesn't have to just be harms. It could be benefits or whatever, but whatever. Okay. So you're going to say what each of these means and how it all fits together, right? So that's the agency versus moral agency part. So this is definition of what it is to be an agent. What's which... What's special about moral agents? Well, they can do morally relevant stuff that can cause harms in particular, okay? Um, and then you might wanna do this here, or you might wanna do this down here later in the paper. I'm not sure exactly which, it's gonna depend on how you, how you do it. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do these things, but you probably wanna say a little bit about how this idea about moral agency um, stacks up against um, responsibility, right? Because this is actually going to be one of the uh, fundamental moves that Flaherty wants to make in the paper, which is to say that normally um, we tend to think that these two go along, right? So obviously, like I said, in the case of where a person through no fault or choice of their own does something that causes a bad thing to happen, we don't hold them responsible. So that's like the completely accidentally hitting the person who runs out in front of this, your car um, that you couldn't avoid. Um, we think you're the moral agent, you're the person who did the thing, but we don't think you're responsible, at least where responsibility is tied to things like blame. And I should say that that's not the only kind of moral responsibility. There's a lot of uh, very kind of nuanced stuff that can go on there. Um, so moral agency, um, when you are the person that causes the, say, causes the accident through no fault of your own, uh, there's actually a phenomenon that we talk about called uh, agent regret, which is the phenomenon or the sort of regret that you would feel if you were that driver, right? You regret the fact that you hit the person who ran out in front of the street, even though you actually did nothing wrong. So that is an important little wrinkle. Uh, we don't need to talk about that too much, other than just to point out to you here that for Flirty, he thinks that taking agency and responsibility together, as we normally do, obviously some, you know, sort of wiggleness, <laughs> wiggle lines about how you fit them together, but Flirty thinks we should cut between them and take them to be completely separate questions. Um, and he thinks this, that's gonna be helpful in talking about technology. Um, I have to confess that I am not 
at all sure I understand exactly why that's the case. Um, I can think of a lot of hypotheses, and I go through a few of them in the um, in the written lectures, uh, trying to work out what Forty actually has in mind here. Um, that's part of what I want you to do, but I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Uh, so, okay, we've done this. This is the main, I mean, this is really the main chunk of the paper, right? Where you are um, kind of setting out his view and then applying it saying, okay, well, and so when you go to apply the, the criteria for agency, to the out gatekeeper algorithms, you just want to go one thing at a time, right? So you've got these three things, right? And then you've got the, uh, I thought I was going to write it here, but I didn't do a good job. Uh, okay, so you have agency. Let me try to do that now. So to be an agent, you have to have these three things. And then to be a moral agent is, you know, sort of that stuff plus, um, sorry. I guess this should be a, this is a terrible drawing. Okay, so that stuff, moral agency equals that, plus um, causing moral stuff. I'll just say that. Um, you know, causing goods, bads, harms, things to uh, the sorts of beings whose interests matter. So that's what it is to be a moral agent. It's to be an agent who can do those kind of things, right? So. Then we go we, to the gatekeeper algorithm and you just want to go as a checklist. You go, okay, is this thing that we're talking about interactive? Probably yes. Is it adaptable? Probably yes. Is it autonomous? Probably yes. Can it cause um, goods and bads for human beings? Sure. Plenty of examples um, from uh, YouTube's algorithms inciting extreme, extremism. Uh, there's some research that suggests that ideological violence is socially contagious. Uh, mob violence and things go along, along with that uh, that have been caused by stuff on Facebook. Um, lots and lots of uh, things like that. You just want to pick an example or two and say, yep, looks like we can cause morally relevant things, cause harms. And since it's an agent that's causing harms, the gatekeeper algorithm, what it looks like on Forty's view, is going to be a moral agent. So now we turn to the question of We've done that. We turn to the question, well, what does that actually mean, right? What have we actually bought by taking on this picture that Florida set out for us? Um, and this now is the part where I'm really asking you to do your own independent thought, probably more so than on any of the other units because you've been through this several times and I trust that you guys have got the hang of it seems to me you do um so now what i want you to do is talk about sort of okay so what does it actually mean to say that a um an algorithm is the moral agent when we might not be able to say that it's morally responsible in the sense of we can blame it uh, or that it makes sense to um punish it right so if you think of moral responsibility in a very narrow way just um like uh, the criminal law, right? So you are morally responsible when you're guilty, right? And when you are guilty of a crime, that means that now we can do something to you, right? We can punish you, we can, you know, demand that you apologize, all sorts of things like that in the criminal law. Um, similar sorts of things, although even a wider scope in regular life with just moral responsibility. So, Florida says, Okay, so we've so far shown that on Florida's view, it looks like algorithms um, that work on social media sites and other kinds of gatekeeper algorithms can be moral agents. But what does that mean about responsibility? Well, can we blame an algorithm? Can we punish an algorithm? Um, that doesn't seem plausible, right? You know, we can't be like, go to your room, you don't get a snack. Um, if we could, we're probably not, we're talking about a very different system than what, you know, we actually have right now. Um, at best, you know, we might do things like just say, we might scrap it, right? We might just say this algorithm is so fundamentally flawed that we're going to get rid of it. Or we might, you know, send it back kind of for re-engineering. Um, very different things than we would ever do for a human agent that has caused something bad, right? So the question then is like, if moral responsibility in the, at least most of the common straightforward human uh, 
senses of that, you know, where it, it's tied to things like you should be, if you're responsible, you should apologize, or you are open to being blamed or punished, or we are justified in yelling at you, those kind of things. If we're breaking that connection, then what is, Florida do you think that we should be, like, what are we gaining by calling, by applying the notion of agents, moral agency to these algorithms? And so I think Florida has answers here. And again, like I said, there's several kind of possibilities. He's not super clear about it. Um, one seeming possibility is that we just, it, it helps us with our explanation. Um, if we can, if we're looking for someone, uh, forget about blame here, just we're kind of like wanting to know who caused the bad thing to happen. In some cases, so that, that's kind of a question about agency, right? I guess it's not necessarily about what we're going to do to them when we figure out who it is, but we just want to know like, what was the, th a, who, what entity was the thing that did it, right? Um, and it can be kind of confusing, right? In modern sort of engineering cases, you have systems where there's no individual who is looking over the whole thing and knows what all the parts of the system are, right? Modern engineering, you have, you know, um, especially software engineering, you're breaking up the system into tiny little bits and then everybody's working on different parts and nobody's actually in charge of kind of like checking the whole thing because that actually might be practically impossible with a fairly large system. So if everybody is working on little parts and nobody is ever in a position to see how they all fit together, when the system does something that causes a harm, well, you know, our, our, our impulse is to be like, well, blame the engineering department or blame the vice president that was overseeing it or blame the engineers that were doing it. But in some cases, I think what Florida's view is allowing us to say is that we go, no, 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 or we go, the, the fault, what was the responsible agent? It was the algorithm. It was the, the system. It wasn't any of the people. Um, maybe the people were blameworthy for develop, designing a bad system, or the vice president was, is kind of blameworthy for not allowing, or for allowing a bad system to go into production or whatever. But it's to, it's a more definitive response where instead of being like, well, yeah, you wrote that part of the code and I wrote that part of the code, but this part should have been caught in the code review by you. Um, and, you know, it's all like ambiguous and we don't know kind of where to point the finger and say, yeah, that's the, I keep wanting to say person, but you can't say person. That's the agent that did it, right? Um, for Florida, I think the view is supposed to be that there's some benefit to being able to point at the algorithm and say, yeah, it was the algorithm's fault. Um, so there's, I'm not super sure that that's actually the right way to interpret him. Uh, that's one way. There's several things going on in the paper. So again, what I'd like you to do is just kind of go through what I just did, right? To say, okay, well, it looks like we've got a bit of a puzzle here. Like, why are we actually doing this? <laughs> kind of like, what does this bias if we start understanding moral agency in this way, or sorry, in this way, which leads us to cut it off from moral responsibility. What are we buying, right? What is that? How is that actually benefiting our kind of thought about and our moral discourse, the way that we go about talking about goods and bads and harms and stuff like that? Okay, so that's you using your brain, right? And just reading D or using some of the things I just said. Finally, the last thing I'd like you to do um, is uh, just think, take a step back. So this part is saying, okay, well, what is this actually, what, what is this all supposed to mean, right? Why are we actually doing, talking about this or caring about this? Why would this view be helpful, right? Um, and finally, what, what I want you to do is think, well, okay, so even if this view is helpful, is this, any, is this view any good? Um, there's a lot of things you might bring up. Uh, in the written lectures, I go more overboard than usual in kind of jumping up and down on this picture because I frankly do not like it, but it's still something we're talking about. So you can either take one of the criticisms I raise, um, develop it further or even better, say what my criticism was and say why you think I'm off base, right? That, I'd love to read that. but. 
whatever you're doing, I just want you to be thinking about kind of like, is this picture really capturing something useful? And is it doing something that kind of moves us forward in thinking about how to deal with harms when they're caused by systems where the system is operating in a, you know, a way that looks kind of like an agent, right? So that's what I want you to do. 